He needed a place to stay for the night. This is 35-year-old Ralph Shorty, a former businessman turned politician that is now a U.S. convicted sex offender. You know, he was trying to get a, uh, a GED. In fact, when we first met, I was trying to help him study and things like that for the GED. And although Shorty won back-to-back -back elections in 2010 and 2014 to the Oklahoma Senate while strongly advocating for family values during his campaigns, this senator's actions tell an entirely different story altogether. I don't have any legitimate work for you. I you're just doing cool stuff. This is what the 35-year-old senator said to a 17-year-old boy who had asked him for money over an instant messaging app known as Kick. We're not going to have enough time can we get together tomorrow, man, after one? I'll get even, I'll get a hotel room or something if that would make it easier. When Ralph Shorty was detained in March of 2017 on suspicion of hiring a juvenile boy for he resigned from his position as a two-term Republican lawmaker. His quick ascent to power altered his personality, making him believe that he was above the law, but this is what happens when a senator gets caught red-handed. Hey, you know, some more police department, man. We just need to check on your welfare, make sure you're okay. We're not going away. Yeah, because you have a juvenile in your hotel room. Come out before you get me worried. Show me your hands. Okay. Shorty was born in Casper, Wyoming, and spent some of his younger years on the Rosebud Indian Reservation near Grass Mountain, South Dakota. His attorney stated that Shorty experienced a challenging upbringing characterized by poverty a shooting incident involving his brother when he was three years old, and abuse from stepfathers and his mother's partners. We hired an investigator in this case to look more closely into Mr. Shorty's background, that Mr. Shorty grew up in poverty on a Native American reservation in South Dakota. He was subjected to horrific abuse by a series of stepfathers and boyfriends of his mother. He was shot by his brother when he was three years old. Shorty completed his high school education at Westmore High School in the year 2000 and then pursued studies at Heartland Baptist Bible College, an unaccredited Oklahoma City institution providing religious minister training. During the early years of his career, Shorty ventured into the gas and oil industry, gaining work experience in that field. Around 2002, he began his foray into politics, actively participating in various Republican political campaigns. Shorty even founded a Republican political consulting firm in 2014, but court records revealed that Senator Shorty had encountered financial challenges predating his time in office. These included an eviction, lawsuits related to debt, as well as foreclosure proceedings. Shortly after this, Shorty ventured into another business and opened up a coffee shop in southern Oklahoma City with a business partner. After being caught with a 17-year-old boy in a motel room in Moore, Oklahoma, on March 16, 2017, the Cleveland County District Attorney charged Shorty with three felonies, soliciting a minor for prostitution, prostitution within 1,000 feet of church premises, and transporting someone from prostitution. According to an affidavit, the two told police they had brought marijuana with them. More police have released a video of their arrest that features Shorty in the motel room sporting a t-shirt that reads, Now go make me a sandwich, with a cartoon depiction of a sandwich above it. It also quotes Ephesians 5.22, a Bible text that urges wives to submit to their husbands. What's going on with you, man? Just trying to have a good time. Yeah. What's your name? Ralph. Ralph what? Shorty. You got an ID, Shorty? Well, I'm sorry, guys. You're kind of freaking out a little bit. Yeah, that's what we do. He's 17. What do you mean, okay? I, I didn't know. You. Okay. But you got a 17-year-old hanging out with you. So what was going on over here tonight, man? Uh, we were just hanging out and talking about life and stuff. Couldn't graduate high school and he was trying to help him get his life on the track. Getting high with a young kid, whatever is a bad idea. Ralph's story was brought into questioning on the night of February 13th, 2018. I had some officers contact at Super 8 um, on uh, March the 9th, I think it was, real early in the morning. Yeah. That's what we're here to talk about. Why don't you tell me what, what transpired there? He looks calm and composed as the detectives begin questioning about his whereabouts, as well as his relation to the 17-year-old minor who was found in his motel room with him. So you say you, how long you know the guy? So it's been definitely over a year. Okay. What What do you know him about? What's his name? You know his last name? No. 
He's been over to my coffee shop a couple times. I know that he had been uh, arrested for drug dealing in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that he had dropped out of high school. Until now, the senator looks to be calm and collected, denying any suggestive remarks by the detectives. It's only after the detective pulled up a copy for his correspondence with the minor over Kick that the senator figures out exactly the kind of trouble he's in. Do you text him or how do y'all communicate? Usually phone calls. Phone calls? Okay. Well, it's interesting because um, on his tablet, he has a conversation that he says that he had with you using an app called Kick. You know what that is? Okay. There's a pretty lengthy conversation on his tablet that uh, he says is with the guy. Is the online or the kick kick ID is Jamie Tilly, um, and you told the officers that night that that's who what, what your online. He, he called me Jamie. Uh huh. I'm not sure why. Okay. And um, anyways, so we we've, we've got a conversation between him and this Jamie Tilly about. Um, the duo exchanged the explicit texts in which Shorty called the teen baby boy and offered him money in exchange for sex acts, according to the authorities. He starts calling this guy Daddy, he says, hurry up Daddy, I'm super horny. Hey, keep me updated because I want you bad, Daddy. Uh, a guy named Jamie Tilly says, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna be like a good little boy if you keep calling me Daddy. This goes on and on and on and on. Well, then it gets to the end, it says, <clears throat> it says okay, I'll be down the street, a couple houses, in about 10 minutes or so. He says, okay, um, let me know so I have an idea. And then that person says, I-35 about the exit in four, at 4th four Street. And then it says, I'm here. Well, um, we've got a witness that sees him get in a white Grand Cherokee, and they follow that white Grand Cherokee to the hotel, Super Royal First to 4th and Eastern at the gas station, uh, and then to the circle, and then to the Super 8 where where the guy in the white uh, Jeep Cherokee and him uh, check into a room and then go back out and go into a room 120. All right? Uh, and they sit there until the police show up where she then calls his dad and uh, and he calls a, in turn calls the police and the police show up there until 120, knock on the door and then you come. Shorty handed himself in the same day and was granted a $100,000 bail. So, again I ask, you told officers that you have online identity Jamie. Um, this guy, or uh, Hagen, saying that he was talking to you. We got a witness putting you, picking him up at the same time that this message was sent saying I'm here. So I, I kind of got to say that Jamie Tilly's you. What if I said that he told you you guys met through a Craigslist ad the very first time that he posted in Casual Encounters? No. Okay. So here's the deal, Ralph. You and I both know what the truth is, and the truth is not what you're telling us. Is he legitimately underage? Yeah. And he was the first time that you met him. And I said... 16. I I asked him, I said, hey, does he know how old you were? And he said, yeah, he knows, because we had a discussion about it, and at first he was uncomfortable with it, but then he finally got over it. The detectives now begin to turn on the heat and come down hard on the senator. They confront him about finding condoms in his bag and lotion in the possession of the minor. You show up with condoms, he shows up with lotion. I mean, that's true. Yeah, there was condoms in your bag. The cop saw them. They also begin asking Story about the weed that was found in a plastic container in the hotel room. Story tries to deflect these accusations, but does so poorly. There's also that was in a green plastic container. Marijuana that was in a green plastic container with labels from Colorado, that was in the room. Did you ever touch that bottle? No. So there's no way your fingerprints will be on it? No. Okay, because okay, we have the bottle. I don't know what to touch. He says, matter of fact, he says when the police knocked on the door that y'all were smoking, y'all were both smoking marijuana. He said that he brought a gram when you brought a gram. And you guys rolled a huge blunt. In the interrogation footage, you can see a visible shift in this body language. The 6'6 tall politician is hunched down and speaks in a low tone with his head lowered. This, according to body language experts, are signs of someone lying or avoiding confrontation. We also see him clasping onto his own hands, a self-soothing gesture people use when they are stressed or nervous. 
and if you want to move forward from this with keep saying that's not you, then that's fine. But I don't want to be here not giving you an opportunity to to set the straight set set it straight and tell the truth. It doesn't sound like anything I say is going to help. Mm, okay. I mean, the truth helps. And just so you know that there's also exchanged pics at one point. Um, and hopefully you didn't take a picture of your day with your phone because that's going to tag it whenever you send it to somebody. No, I don't. I don't do that. Okay. Well, I wouldn't. I don't understand why he would do this. I really don't. The following footage is just a continuation of the detectives trying to pin the evidence on Shorty and asking him to confess to the crime that was committed. And he said he knows you because, like you're saying, coffee shop, all that, said you guys smoked weed on the second floor of the coffee shop in the past. I just don't understand why he would do that. He has nothing to gain from this. Except screwing me. How does that help him? I have no idea. Yeah, no, I mean, he has nothing to gain. Why would that be him? on probation or whatever. How, he has no idea who you are. He thinks your name is Jamie. He has no idea what your real name is. He referred to you as Jamie the whole time I'm talking to him. Did you ever have him? No, never. Did you ever give him a hand? No. Did he ever give you a hand? I've never even seen him naked or even asked. This is going to be the first time that any of that had ever, ever happened. No, sir. Well, you can't help with, that, with this stuff. You can definitely help with my talk, though. That's another statement. I'm just, I mean, I'm just going through reading what you wrote, because I can I can prove that you wrote. It. I mean, that that's you. So I'm just letting you know, so you know what's uh, what's coming down the pipe. A detective tries to build rapport by being transparent with Shorty about the course of action he's going to take the following day. I'm giving you an opportunity here, and he told me I shouldn't, but I am. I'm giving you an opportunity to do it. To, to take responsibility for it and make it a little bit easier on yourself. Um, if you don't want to take it, that's fine. Okay? I can tell you what I'm going to do tomorrow. All right? First thing tomorrow morning, I'm taking this case to the Glen County District Attorney's Office. Okay? Um, I'm going to suggest that they file charges for solicitation of a minor, prostitution within 1,000 feet of a, a church, or for the purposes of prostitution. Okay? And then they're going to decide whether or not they're going to file charges or not. Um, obviously, I've given you the opportunity. I've given you an opportunity to help to help yourself out, to tell us what happened. Following the emergence of reports implicating Shorty, but prior to the filing of charges, the Oklahoma Senate took swift action. In a unanimous decision, they stripped Shorty of certain privileges, including his office, parking space, and committee positions. However, despite these consequences, he maintained his seat, voting rights, and salary. Notably, both Republican and Democratic officials from Oklahoma, including Governor Mary Fallon, publicly called on Shorty to resign from his position. We're taking, we're getting everything off of the two devices that we have of his. We're taking all that stuff off, all right? And our guys going through them one by one and sending us different IP addresses to look at. The, I, the Jamie Tilly ID, we can prove that identity is you. I mean, amazing thing that we can do with, with, with electronics and stuff like that. That we can that we can recover and stuff like that. With warrants and everything. So I, I I'm telling you right now, but beyond a shadow of a doubt, that's you. Eventually, on March 22, 2017, within a week after being officially charged, Shorty made the decision to step down from his office. So I mean at one point, uh, I don't know, I may have said this earlier, I'm gonna I'm gonna you like a good little boy if you keep calling me daddy. He goes, yes, daddy, please. So how did you, if that's not you, how did you contact him last night, or that night? I think he called me. He didn't have a phone. Uh, sir, he called me. That's all I can say. I don't know. How did he know that you were outside? He, he called me, and I told him I was on my way. I told him I'd be there in a certain amount of time, and I got there. Did you Did you use this phone that you've lost? I don't know if I had on September 5, 2017, a federal grand jury brought forth a significant indictment against Shorty. The indictment included four federal charges related to sex trafficking and child pornography. These charges encompassed not only the incident that took place in March, but also videos that Shorty was alleged to have distributed from his smartphone back in 2012 and 2013. When faced with these federal charges, Shorty pleaded not guilty. 
basically all that can happen is that at this point is that <laughs> we get more evidence about what's going on because there's nowhere to go from here but more to add to it I can find I know you guys don't believe me and I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise unless I have something to show you and I, I just don't know I find it hard to believe that you magically lost your phone on the way over here as well so why'd you tell the officers there that you're, you had an online identity by Jamie? I didn't say that. I said that he's called me Jamie. I don't mean to, to, uh, you did it because we got body cameras and I actually saw it. So they were talking to him, they were talking to you, and you said you had a home, that you went online or had an online identity of Jamie. That's it. You didn't say Tilly, the last one, but you said Jamie. As a result of the federal charges being announced, the Cleveland County District Attorney made the decision to drop the state charges that were initially filed. If I had phone calls or if I had... But you don't because they don't exist. What we have is the truth. You know it. You know that's what I would have thought to have to, to record a phone call or anything with a guy. I mean, he's... It was recorded. That's what we've got pictures of. I'm the conversation about. was recorded. I mean, that, that, that is so clearly you. You and I both know that's you. Anyone we show that to is going to know that's you. Well, that's the problem. It's, like not a pro it's the truth. What, what I'm saying, the problem is, is that for some reason, you think that if you stick your head in the sand and ignore it, it's going to go away. It's not. In early December 2017, the police made public the video capturing Shorty's arrest at a motel where he was discovered with a 17-year-old male. Fast forward to June 2018, during the sentencing phase, prosecutors revealed in a memorandum that Shorty had engaged in sexual activity with the victim on two occasions within the year leading up to their discovery at the hotel. Furthermore, prosecutors informed the judge that they intended to pursue full restitution from Shorty to cover the victim's losses, including any expenses related to their well-being and care. When approached for a comment, Shorty's lawyer stated that it would not be appropriate to provide one at the present time. This is not a defining moment, this is just a moment. You've had other things happen in your life that were awful at the time, and then now that you look back on them, they're still awful, but they didn't change who you were, they didn't make, it didn't, it's a bump. That's all it is. It doesn't change the fact that you're a good person, or that you care about your family, that none of that changes. You should tell us what happened. No. I told you everything. Uh, okay. Following his guilty plea, the prosecution also dismissed three child pornography allegations against him. Shortly after, Shorty received his sentence in Oklahoma City Federal Court on September 17, 2018. The verdict? 15 years behind bars, followed by 10 years of supervised release. During the sentencing, Shorty took the opportunity to apologize to his family, fellow Christians, and constituents. His attorney, who believed the sentence was fair, requested that Shorty serve his time at a facility in Texas equipped with a sex offender rehabilitation program. He'll go to a facility where almost everybody else there will be sex offenders, so they, they do that on purpose for that very reason. As per the Bureau of Prisons' decision, Shorty was placed in the Federal Correctional Institution Ville in Segoville, Texas. In February 2019, U.S. District Judge DiGiusti imposed a restitution fine of $125,850 on Shorty, approximately half of the maximum amount allowed. The senator, once a figure of power and influence, now finds himself being escorted for fingerprinting and processing. The gravity of the situation is palpable as he confronts the charges brought against him. What do you think? Was his sentence fair, or should he have received a harsher punishment? Remember, this is someone that was quoted saying, the younger, the better, as he looked for encounters from minors. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.